All right, Shalom. Kahalai and La, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahusha, Bahashim, Rakaha, Kadash. The honors to the apostles and to the elders of Great Millstone. Most peace, love, and salutation to the other brothers from this work and truth of sincerity. Shalom, this is the brother Bata back again through the spirit with another lesson. Lord willing to be edifying. This is the book of Job, chapter 14, verse 14. Oh, that's the spirit, 144. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Job 14 and 14. It says, if a man die, shall he live again? All the days of my <clears throat> all the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change come. So what Job is talking about, he's prophesying about the future change that's gonna come upon the nation of Israel. We're gonna be made immortals. You know, right now we are mortals uh, in these bodies of corruption waiting for the judgment of the Lord. And I'm finna get that real quick, real precept. Chains of Darkness, the book of Jude. I hope you brothers can hear me clearly. I got my truck idling. Um, you know what? Let me just turn it off just in case. Okay, this is the book of Jude, chapter 1, verse 6. It says, And the angels which kept not their first estate. Let's see. It says, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the great the judgment of that great day. And that the everlasting chains is referring to these bodies. You know, we're trapped in this uh cycle of death, this covenant of death, and it's it's because we're trapped in this flesh, this body, which is um subject to sin and death. <laughs> Um, that's striking my curiosity. Uh, let me see. Let's go to the book of Jude 1 and um, let's look at that precept. The angels is referring to the elect. The men, the Israelites. Um, let's see what that word first to state. Strong G, about Israel. 746. Arche. 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 That's the, it says, um, first to date, which means beginning, origin. Because remember, Adam, Adam, uh, Adam was, he was perfect. You know? Oh, what, what was the scripture? Um, it's a scripture popping to my mind. I'm just trying to remember how it's quoted. Um, the first, let me type in first Adam, see what pops up. First Adam. Let me see. We're gonna be like we was in the garden because at one time, one period of time, we was perfect before the Lord. Okay, living soul, last one we seen. Bear wicked heart, transgressions overcome, so be it. Oh, here's a good precept, second Edges 3 and 21. It says, For the first Adam bearing a wicked heart transgressed and was overcome and so be all they that were born of him so we are descendants of adam you know through the sin of adam we have been stuck in the continuous cycle of sin and death but before that we was in a different state we was in a godly state you know we was in a perfect state okay let's see um And I answered then and said, "This is my, this is my first and last saying that it have been better not to give, to have given the earth unto Adam, or else when it was given him to be have, to restrain, to have restrained from him from sinning." Mm, that's not what I'm looking for. Okay, well, okay, so basically, man. Like I explained through the spirit, the first Adam was uh he was perfect. But through through the, the woman became the beginning of sin. The scriptures tell you that. Beginning of sin. Real quick. This is Sirach. 25 and 24. It says, Of the woman came the beginning of sin, and through her we all die. What the scripture says, what the wages of sin is. Let's get it. 
uh, Romans 6 and 23. It says, For the wages of sin is death, but the, the gift of the Most High is eternal life through Yahweh Shah Mashiach. So through, through, through Adam, we all die. And through Adam, we're all going to live, which Yahweh Shah is that second Adam. And the first Adam, you know? So, through Yahweh, through Yahweh Shah, we was we are turned back to our regular state, you know, which is uh, that godly, that godly state that we was once in the garden. Okay, let's see. This is the first state, which means the beginning origin. And it let, lets you know that's the, talking about Adam, you know, in the beginning, the book of Genesis. It says the person or thing that com commerces, the first person of or thing in a series, the leader, and that's what Adam was. It says that he which that by which anything begins to be the origin, the act of cause, and that you know clearly Adam, the extremity of a thing, of the corners of his, mm, the first place, principality, rule, magistrate. Okay. Beginning corner at first state. Power and principality, principle rule. So that lets you know that we're we talking about Adam. Adam and the, the Adamites, the state that they were in. You know, they was in a perfect state before the Lord until Adam sinned against the Lord and the Lord put us in these everlasting chains of darkness. He said that he cursed us, man. Let's see, chains. Let's see the word chains. Strong's G eleven ninety nine. Desmas. 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 The word uh, chains is the word desmas, which means a band or bond. It says a band ligament. Of the body or shackle of a prisoner, and that's exactly what we are. We're prisoners in this in this wicked flesh, man. It says, "Oh, uh, um, body of this death." If I'm not mistaken, let's see. Uh, Romans seven and twenty four. It says, "O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death?" So we need deliverance out of these bodies. Okay, because we're basically bound. We're, we're restrained. We're chained. We're trapped. Okay, it says, a ligament of the body of shackle prisoner. Figuratively, an impit, immediate, or disability, man, bond, chain string. Okay, so that's that word. Because um, we got the word first estate. We got the word chains. Okay. Those are the real important words that I wanted to get real quick. So let's go back and read it again. The book of Jude 1 and 6. And the angels, which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation. The angels let you know it's talking about Israel. Real quick, precept to back that up because the scripture says, prove all things, hold fast, that's, hold fast that which is good. Let's go to the book of Psalms uh, 82. Psalms 82, and I'm going to start at verse... Six, it says, "I have said, ye are gods. Who is who are gods? The Israelites." It says, "And all of you are the children of the Most High." Who that fits Israel, but ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. So, we have been in a a, a constant state of death because of this the sin of Adam. You know, uh, ye are gods. How was I said it too? Let's get that. Um, said it. John uh, 10 and 34. Okay, John 10. Verse 33, it says, The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stoned thee not, 
but for blasphemy and because that thou being a man makest thyself God Yahweh shall answer them is it is it not written in your law I said you are gods because they didn't understand they will they will they will they didn't understand that we all actually are gods <laughs> where God means power is from from the Hebrew word Allahayim, which means powers, angels. We so we are gods, man. You know? So how can you make thyself a god when we are already gods, man? All of us, Israelites, we're princes of the Apollo. What do you think does Yasha Allah means? Yah meaning he, Shar, Prince, Allah means power. You know, and even the word Jezreel, which the word Hebrew word the Hebrew word for Jezreel is Yazara Allah, which means Yah. Zar, Yah, meaning he, Zar, Zar, if I'm not mistaken, means seed. Zar, no, it's Zara, Zara, Yah, Zara, Yeah, Zara, it means seed, if I'm not mistaken, and Allah means power. He's the seed of the power, man. Who is that power? Yahweh Bashem Yahweh So we are gods, and they. This is just one of the examples. Then the Jews didn't understand. They didn't understand, you know. Certain things that they didn't un they did not understand. Some things were not revealed to them. But on um, let's read verse 35. It says, If he called them gods unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken. So Yahweh is affirming that look, dummy, we are gods. You are gods. We all are gods, dummy. That's basically what he's saying in layman's terms. Because the scriptures is written like that for a reason. It's talking about the Israelites. We are gods. And Yahweh Shah knows this for a fact. He's the son of the Heavenly Father, man. He knows this. He knows that we are gods, man. I'm going to read that verse again. It says, If he called them gods unto whom the word of God came. Who the word of God came? To the Israelites. It says, And the scripture cannot be broken. So we must be them gods, man. Okay, that's all I wanted off that. Um, let's go back. Just go back to the book of Job, chapter 14, verse 14. Uh, let me see. Did I get all the scriptures that I was holding? I'm going to read Jude again. Jude 1 and 6. It says, And the angels which kept not... the, And the angels... What the, what does the word um, Allahaya mean? It means God. I was lucky. Allahaya means powers, angels. So this is talk about the so-called powers, the Israelites. It says, and, and the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath preserved in everlasting chains of under darkness unto the great the unto the judgment of that great day. Hold on, let me look up that word darkness. Under darkness. Let's see, uh, let's look at oh, it's getting hot. I might have to start my truck up again. Okay, the darkness. The Greek word there is Strong's G twenty two seventeen, Zaphos. 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 Akin to the base. Uh, it says darkness, blackness. Used it. Darkness of the net. No, it's going off. Okay. Okay. I just wanted to see what this word darkness actually means. Shrouding like a cloud. Black is darkness. Mist. What I was finna look up I was finna do something I just forgot It slipped my mind um, So The representation of these chains Is talking about the bodies man The bodies that we live in Okay um, Let's go back to the um, Job. Job 14 and 14 it says, if a man dies, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time will I wait. And that's all that's that's what we're doing, man. Through the Spirit and Power Yahweh Shemel Shah, starting with the apostles on down that believe in the name of Yahweh Shemel Shah, we're waiting for that transition period. We're waiting for that change to come. You know, like um the Sam Cook song. I uh, I'm, I know a change gonna come because hey, Jake feel it in that spirit, man. We know something is gonna come. We know a change is gonna come, man. And that's exactly what's going to happen. A change is going to come. And we're patiently waiting for it. It says, um, 
It says till my change come. Yeah, I already read that. Verse 6, 15, it says, Thou shalt call, and I will answer thee. Thou shalt have a desire to the work of thine hands. Why? Because we're going to be in a better state. We're going to be able to be perfect, and the Lord can dwell with us. He's going to be, we're going to be one with the Lord again. Right now, we're, we're dwelling in these sinful bodies. We, we can't get close to the Lord because the Lord doesn't like iniquity. He's the, he's the power that hated the iniquity, man. You know, and we can't, we can't get clo that close to the Lord because of, because of us dealing with the, in his flesh, man. We're, we're, we're unpure. We're not pure. You know, everything that the Lord, the Lord himself is pure. He's, he's complete. He's perfect. So he can't be next. We can't be next to the Lord, man. You know, in a uh, physical sense, you know, we can't be close to the Lord because we're filthy, man. We have to be cleansed. And that's exactly what Yahweh Shah is doing to the elect, man. He's cleansing them by way of the word. So we, when he comes, he's going to change them. He's going to change their bodies. That brings me to the next scripture. Um, let's see. Uh, 1 Corinthians. It's uh, starting at uh, 42 to 50. You know what? Let me get this real quick. This is. Let me get this the book of Job. Job 19. And I'm going to start at 425. It says, For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. Who's our Redeemer? Yahweh Shah is our Redeemer. How did he redeem us? Which means to buy back. He bought us with his blood. The scriptures tell you that. Bought. Let me see if I can pull up a scripture that says how he bought us with his blood. Let me see. Uh, Lord willing. Nope, 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 nope. Precious blood. Let me see. Precious blood. Let me try that. Uh, precious blood. Okay. Let me see. Because we were bought with a price. Is it brought or bought? Let me see. How was I redeemed? Oh, I believe that's in Revelations. When it says he redeemed us back to the Lord with his blood. Let me see. Uh, redeemed blood. Let's see. I believe it's Revelations. Ah, uh, here it is. Revelations 5 and 9. The water you have shot. Kahalayim layam shot. Revelations 5 and 9. It says, And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. Talking about the Bible. Unlocking the, uh, the dark, deep, dark secrets of the scriptures. And the breakdowns, everything, you know. It says, For thou was slain and has redeemed us to the most high by thy blood out of every kindred and, and tongue and people and nation. Why? Because uh, Jacob was scattered through all the heathens. Jacob was scattered all through all throughout the heathen nations because of the mix and mingling that was going on. Jake joining themselves unto the heathen. So our seed was mixed and mingled with the heathen. <laughs> So Job understood that Yahweh Shai is his redeemer and that he would see him in the latter days, which is the time we're living in now. Job is most likely here somewhere on the earth. It says, verse uh, Job 20, 19 and 26, it says, and though, and, and though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see the most high power, whom I shall see for myself and my eyes shall behold him. It's like, and behold, and not another, though my reins be consumed within me. So Job understood that he was going to be, re he was going to die and be reincarnated. And he's going to come back in the latter days um, because reincarnation is biblical and it's real. Uh, we have lived multiple times. And he understood that he was going to come back in the latter days and he was going to see his, his redeemer, his, see the most high. See Yahweh Shai is like it. Um, this is the book of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 i'm gonna start at 48 you know what i'm gonna start at 47 you know what it's <laughs> lucky i'm gonna start at 42 i'm gonna actually start at 42 and um i'm gonna kind of breeze through it and break it down as i go uh let me see the next scriptures are okay i'm done in job 14 i, I can stop holding that okay let me pull up on the screen First Corinthians 15 cause, And I'm going to pull up in my Bible The next scripture I'm going to get Okay The next scripture I'm going to get is Philippians I'm going to hold that on deck Philippians 3 and 21 Okay this is the book of uh, First Corinthians 15 and 42 It says so also in, Is in the resurrection of the dead 
it is sown in corruption it is raised in mortal in, in corruption it is sown in corruption it is raised in incorruption and it's talking about it the, the, the elect they're gonna our bodies are corruptible right now they're subject to the the uh pain they're subject to you know getting old basically we're dying man that's what we're doing we're dying we're in a constant state of death we get old we celebrate the world celebrates birthdays but you're celebrating dying honestly we're, we're not living we're dying man our bodies are old broken down esau does not you know give us the proper nutrients our body needs he makes all the things that your body good for you expensive you know you can't afford it a, uh, a continuous state of poverty you can't you can't live right in this society and it's all by design this is verse 43 it is sown in dishonor it is raised in glory it is sown in weakness it is raised in power because we're going to be raised in power the elect are going to be raised in power because they're going to be changed their bodies are going to be changed that's what we're getting to verse 44 it is sown a natural body it is raised a spiritual body and that's the difference the natural body is subject to the things of, of this world a spiritual body is above the things of this world it says and it and so it is written the first man adam was made a living soul and the last adam was made a quickening spirit the word quicken what the word quicken means to make alive let's prove that real quick the word quicken means to come to life re receive life to give life to return life from the dead okay uh hasten accelerate mm, become faster or more active enter in a state of no 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 the quicken it says to move faster to, to make keen or be acute to give life or energy to to show signs of life to give new life new energy to so yeah i was the second adam was made a quickening spirit through the second adam we was made alive he came to bring life unto our people the nation of israel yahweh came to that we can live Um, the book of Matthew chapter 1 verse 21 And she shall bring forth a son And thou shalt call his name Yahweh Shai Which means Yah meaning he Yahweh Shai saves or delivers What is he delivering us from? Let's get it It says for he shall save his people from their sins So if Yahweh Shai save us from their sins And we understand if the if Yahweh Shah saved the elect from uh, the, the nation of Israel from their sins, and we understand that sin is the wages of sin is death, what is it that Yahweh Shah is saving us from? He's saving us from death. He's he's making us alive. He's quickening, quickening us. When I say us, I speak as an Israelite. He's quickening us, man. <laughs> so Yahweh Shah is making the elect the, the nation of israel alive he's keeping us alive he's our lifeline um john let's see uh john uh 1844 no john 10 is it john 10 i'm thinking of john 10 and 10 it says the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy that thief is talking about esau edom i have come that they might have life and that they may have it more abundantly so yahweh shah came so the elect can have the, the nation of israel can have life and so on this side is starting with the elect okay let's go back to the book of corinthians first corinthians 15 and um verse 47 it says the, the first man is is of the earth earthy that word because the word adam means a uh, uh the word adam comes from the hebrew word adama which means from the ground from the earth of the ground you know it says because th that's what that means he's the first man is of the earth because that's exactly what the lord made us talking it says the second man is the lord is the lord from heaven that's speaking about the spiritual bodies man because our bodies are going to be changed man these but the, the lord is going to bring us some new bodies man and they're not of this world man They're angelic. They're celestial. Let me see. Celestial. There we go. OK, 
Okay, the word celestial, it means pertaining to the sky or the visible or or the visible heavens. Um, okay, um, heavenly. There it is. The word celestial, heavenly. Uh, from the Latin celestius, it says heavenly pertaining to the sky, heaven, abode of the gods, which the only god there is is Yahweh by Shemal Shah. Yahweh in this son, Yosha. Okay, it says, uh, which is a uh, certain sir. Found in Germanic and Baltic meaning bright, clear, shining, clear. So, um, celestial, it says, of or retaining to the sky, relating to or inhabited. Oh, here it is. Here's a good one. Relating to or inhabiting a divine heaven of heaven or of, it says, of heaven or the spirit. Because that's exactly what it is. It's a spiritual body. It's not of this, it's not of this, this world. Um. 1 Corinthians 15 and um, verse 48. It as is as is the earth, the earthy, such such are all Salakia. Um verse uh, 1 Corinthians 15 and 48. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such are all that such are they also that are heavenly. So the the celestial the the the, uh, the earthy bodies, the, the bodies that we live in now are just like Hold on, let's see. Uh, just like the um, regular bodies that we have, you know, these earthly bodies are earthly bodies. The heavenly bodies are different from the earth, from the earthly bodies. You know, it's a distinguish. It's a difference between the two. So we gonna have we gonna have a body like Yahweh Shah has, man. We gonna have the bodies that we have in the uh the, that we have now and that the heathen gonna continually have. We're gonna be changed. Our bodies are gonna be different from theirs. Um, this is the book of 1 Corinthians 15 and 49. It says, And and as we have borne the image of the earthly, we shall also we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. So we're gonna bear that image of the heavenly bodies on the earth. We're gonna be that example. Just like Yahweh Shai, he was that, he bear the image of the heavenly bodies on the earth. The elect are gonna do the same thing in the kingdom, man. They're gonna see how. The, the different they're gonna know the difference between their bodies and our bodies because our bodies are gonna be from the heavens and they, they everybody's gonna see how different it is this is gonna be a big distinguish it's gonna be a big difference and that's what he's getting to we gonna show the heathens how the heavenly bodies look how they operate how they how they'll far above this world this is verse 50. It says, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of the Most High. This is talking about these bodies that we reside in. It says, Neither does corruption inherit in corruption. So these bodies must be completely wiped off, man. They must be left here. These bodies are not coming with us, man. It says, Behold, I shew you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we all we shall all be changed. Our bodies is going to be changed, man. Verse 52, in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, that means very quickly, the Lord is going to change us. At the last trumpet, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and, the, and we shall be changed. Because when that trumpet sound, the dead is going to be raised up, and they're going to have those new bodies. And the elect that are, are still living are going to have are going to have transition over to them new bodies, man. It says, verse 53, for the corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must have must put on immortality so so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality then shall be brought to pass the saying past the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory O death where's thy sting O grave where's thy victory and he's quoting the book of isaiah he's quoting the book of isaiah right there i can um real quick look it up and try to find it real quick He's quoting the book of Isaiah. I forget exactly where it's at. Let me see. Oh, death, where's oh grave? Where's that victory? Okay, let's see. A. Hey. No. Where is it at? Okay, death to swallow up the victory. No, exactly.
actually quoting Hosea. Oh, no, 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 no. Quoting Hosea. Let's go to it real quick. It's like I, it's the book of Hosea, chapter 13, verse 14. It says, I will redeem, I will ransom them from the power of the grave. I will redeem them from death. So that's what the Lord is going to do to the whole nation of Israel through Yahweh Shah. Oh death, I will have I will be thy plagues. O grave, I will be thy destruction. Repentance shall be hid from mine eyes. So the Lord is going to redeem us from the power of death. Death to swallow up the blue victory. I could have sworn it was. It must. I must be thinking of another scripture. Revelation 20 and 14. Let's see what that is. Okay, come. Okay, let me slack you. That wasn't that must be was, that was another scripture I was thinking of. Death is swallow up in victory. Oh death, where's thy stand? That's how it's actually quoting Hosea, not Isaiah. Slack. Okay, um, yeah, so that's it in Hosea. This is back in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, um, verse 56. I'm going to start at 55. It says, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Because the Lord is um, delivering us from the, you know, delivering us from death. It says, verse 56, the sting of death is sin, and the strength of, the, of sin is the law. But thanks be to the Most High, which giveth, uh, giveth us the victory through our Lord, Yahweh Shah Mashiach. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So, got another precept real quick. This is the book of Philippians chapter 3. I'm going to start at verse 20. It says, Philippians 3 20, it says, For our conversation is in the heavens, from whence also we look for, for, the, for, the, for the Savior, the Lord, Yahweh Shah HaMashiach. So our conversation, this is a heavenly conversation that we have right now. You know, me doing this video. This is a heavenly conversation. It's not of this world. Verse 21. It says, Who shall come, who shall change our vile body and vile body to that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able to even to subdue all things unto himself. So Yahweh Shah is going to change our filthy bodies to a, a body just like his, that glorious body, man. Okay, let's see. Uh, and we're waiting for that change. It's the same change that Job was talking about. Uh, Psalms 17 and 15, what that says. Oh, it's a good one. Psalm 17 and 15 says, As for me, I will behold thy face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake with thy likeness. What what is it that what is that? That the that, that heavenly likeness? Those new spiritual bodies, man. That's what the heavenly, that's what thy likeness means. That means you're the, of the same. You just like the heavenly bodies. Just like Yahweh Shai's body. Those heavenly bodies, man. We want that likeness. Okay, 1 John 3 and 2. Let's see what that says. Uh, 1 John chapter 3, verse 2. It says, Behold, that's like it says, Beloved, now are, are we the sons. Behold, this is uh, 1 John 3 and 2. It says, Beloved, now we. Now are we the sons of the most high power, and it does not yet appear what we shall be. Why? Because we're not, we say we the sons of the heavenly father, we sons of God, but it doesn't appear that we're sons of God, of the power. That these heathens, they don't believe it. They question our belief. They question that we're the sons of the heavenly father. So what you know, you know what the Lord is going to do? He's going to prove it to you, man. 
He's gonna show you that we are the real sons and daughters of the of your how about you know shot, man. He's gonna show you. How he's gonna show us by changing us, by making us godlike. Our bodies are gonna be godlike. That means it's not gonna our bodies are not gonna be of this world. It says, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. Who is him? Yahweh Shai. When Yahweh Shai appears, we're gonna be like him. That's what John is saying. Well, are we gonna have the same body as him? We're gonna have glory just like him. We're gonna have everlasting life just like him. We're gonna have dominion just like him. Most importantly, the, the point of this scripture, we're gonna look and have the same body as like as Yahweh Shai, man. You know, we're going to have the same spiritual bodies as Yahweh Shah has. That's what that's getting to. It says, when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath his hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. So... We're going through that fire, man. The scriptures tell you that Yahweh Shah is that purifier. Let's go there. Let's we're going through that fire right now. Let's go to it real quick in the book of Malachi. This is uh Malachi chapter 3. Yahweh Shah is purifying us. Malachi chapter 3 You know what I'm going to start at 1 It says Malachi chapter 3 verse 1 It says behold I will send my messenger And he shall prepare the way before me And the Lord whom ye seek Suddenly shall suddenly come to his temple Even the messenger of the covenant Whom ye delight in Behold he shall come said to Yahweh of hosts And that's speaking about John the Baptist Preparing the way for Yahweh Shah Verse 2 it says but who but who may abide the day of his coming and who shall stand when he appeareth? talking about Yahweh Shah for he is like a refiner's fire and like the fuller's soap verse 3 and he shall sit as a refiner and of pu and purifier of silver and he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer unto Yahweh an, an offering in righteousness so Yahweh Shah is that purifier, man. It's the book of Zephaniah. Proof that Yahweh Shah is that purifier. This is the uh, book of Zechariah, chapter 13, verse 38. It says, And it shall come to pass that in all the land saith Yahweh, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third part shall be left therein. And I will bring the third part through the fire. And will refine them as silver is refined, and will try them as gold is tried. Tried. They shall call on my name, and I will hear them. I will say, "It is my people," and they shall say, "Yahweh is my power." So, who else fixed that description of being that purifier? The scripture that we just ran into said, "Him is pure." Uh, First John three two three. It says, "And every man that hath his hope in Him purifieth himself, even as He is pure." So that's talking about Yahweh Shah because he is pure, man. And he's purifying the elect, which is that gold and that silver. You know, which that word purifying is making the elect better. Oh, let me let me um let me look at that word purify. I could have swapped press P. Purify. I'm missing the R somewhere. Yeah, let's see. Purify. Nope. Oh, it's purified. Yeah, there we go. It's locking. The word, uh, the word purified, it says freedom from moral contamination. <laughs> hey, that's beautiful. Moral contamination. That means we ain't going to be sick. We ain't going to die. We ain't going to gonna have no ailments in the flesh. We ain't going to be, you know, 60 years old with a bald head. <laughs> we ain't going to be, uh, we ain't going to have no pain. No death, no crying, no teeth, none of that. All, all the things of this body that pertain to this body is contaminated, man. And the Lord is coming to free us from that contamination. Memorial, moral contamination. 
which is a going off. We're not going to sin anymore. We're going to have morals. We're going to be perfect. Why? Because the Lord is going to put his law, statutes, and commandments in our inward parts, man. That's free from moral contamination. We're going to be perfect. We're not going to serve other gods. We're not going to worship other gods. You know? It says, sinlessness, innocence, righteous, chastity. Let's get that word, chastity. Let's look at the deeper. The word chastity means sex, sexual purity. Because a lot of our people are not. They're engaging in homosexual acts, man. Morality with respect to sexual relations. That means no, no um, adultery. No adultery. Okay, the word chast means virtuous, pure from unlawful, unlawful sexual intercourse. Sexually pure. Because uh, uh, morally pure, pure, clean, morally pure. So a lot of our people are um, heavy into the LGBT community. They're not, that's not a sex, that's not a, that's not pure right there, you know? They're, they're into all kinds of sodomy, man. So that's one thing that needs to um, change about uh, the nation of Israel. Okay, the word purity, it means simple truth, um, cleanness, pureness, clean, unmixed, chaste, just, undefiled. Freedom from admixture or adulteration. And that's a big thing. Adultery is rapid in this society. It says being undiluted or unmixed with ext extraneous material. The state of being unsalute by sin or moral wrong. Lack lacking a knowledge of evil. Because that's what we're gonna we're not gonna know. We're gonna we are we're gonna be righteous judges, so we're gonna understand both sides of the evil and good. But we're not going to be evil anymore. That evil seed is going to be uprooted out of our, our people. Because according to the Isaiah chapter 1, there's, our people is a seed of evildoers. Let's get it. Um, hey, where is it at? I know it's um, uh, Isaiah chapter 1. It is Isaiah. Uh, oh yeah, it says Isaiah one and four. It says a sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors. They have forsaken Yahweh. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They have gone away backward. So that right that lets you know it's talking about Israel, and that pure we're being purified. That means we're that that seed is getting corrupted and the lord is going to make us pure he's going to make us free from knowledge of evil lacking not lacking a knowledge of evil innocence whiteness pureness a woman's virtue or chastity which is uh not committing adultery and uh come not committing sodomy you know because our people are high heavy into that man so we already got the word the chastity means sexual pureness and oh, another thing too, well, what, women are going to be virgins too. That's another thing. That goes into um, purity. You know, she's going to be pure. She, she's going to be uncontaminated. These women out here in America, they're contaminated. They've been with multiple men, which contaminates their body and contaminates them, their minds. They're fucked up in the head. Why? Because they're not pure. But the Lord is going to change our women. The scripture says it's going to wash off the filth of the daughter of Zion. Let me see. Uh, filth. Zion. Let me see. Isaiah chapter four. I mean, yeah, Isaiah chapter four, verse one. It says, "In the, and in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man." And that day is approaching. It says, "We will seven women are gonna be obedient to one man, to submissive to one man." And it's all through the power of Yahweh Shemayim Shah. 
in these last days are gonna humble a lot of you women and y'all gonna accept y'all fate that you are you beneath the man it, you're gonna be put in your place since you don't want to get in your place the lord gonna put you in your place and shalom to all the women out there that actually you know or, or if you have a man you submissive to your man or you're trying to the best of your abilities man you know shalom to you you know you women you sisters aqua aqua <laughs> um Isaiah 4 and 1 again from the top. And in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man. Seven means completion. It doesn't technically mean seven women. No, it could be more than seven. It says, we will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by that name. So they're going to be wanna be, they're gonna want to be your husband. They're going to want to be attached to you. To you, that one man, which is an Israelite man. Because when, after this world, this war, a lot of men are going to, a lot of men are going to die, man. Because what happened during wars, world world wars, the men are shipped off to battle, while the women are staying at home, and this could be thousands upon thousands of women, man, that are just manless. They have no husband because their husband was shipped off to the war, and they died. I've been watching this World War II documentary, man, and it's just you know in certain see in certain scenes. You seen the men kissing the women. And they was all loaded onto a train to go off to get shipped off to war. So that leaves thousands of women just single. No man left with the children. And it's gonna be a, a lot of cases are gonna be like that here in America. A lot of men are gonna get drafted to the war, and these women are gonna be out here for the picking. Isaiah chapter 4. It's a continuing verse one. It says, "Only let us be called by the name to take our reproach, take away our reproach." These women are gonna be in a terrible case right here. Let's see that word reproach. It says a rebuke, a bland concern, object of scorn, a contempt, a state of disgrace, disgrace, a state of shame, blame, a, a blame, bring up against. These women are gonna be a, a they're gonna be shame faced out here, charged with a fault. A state of disgrace, a mild rebuke or criticism, disgrace or shame, ex express criticism towards. So a lot of women are gonna seek refuge for men and Lord for seek refuge under a, a man of Yahweh Bashmiel Shah to take away their distress, to take away their problems, to take away their uh, situation, to make themselves in a better case of survival. It says, verse 2, it says, In that day shall the branch of Yahweh be beautiful and glorious, and the fruit of the earth shall be excellent and comely for them that are escaped of Israel. Verse verse 3, And it shall come to pass that he that is in, left in Zion, and he that remaineth in Jerusalem shall be holy. That's going uh, that's only going to be the elect, because the Lord, Lord is purging out the unholy. It says, Even every one that is written among the living in Jerusalem. Talking about the elect. Verse 4, the point. When the Lord shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion, and shall have purged the blood of Jerusalem from the midst thereof by the spirit of judgment and by the spirit of burning, Yahweh and Yahweh will create upon every dwelling place of Mount Zion and upon her assemblies a cloud of smoke by day and a shine in the flame of fire by night. For upon all the glory shall be a defense, and there shall be a tabernacle for a shadow in the daytime for the heat and for a place of refuge and for a cover from the storm and from the rain. So the Lord is going to, that's um, symbolic for being, the Lord is going to be with us, man. His tabernacle is going to be with men. The scripture says his tabernacle is with men. You know, the tabernacle of the Lord is with men. So the Lord is going to dwell with us. We're never going to be in a, 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 a case of, you know, suffering like we have done in the society. We're going to be forever under the shadow of the Almighty. Yahweh by Shemel Shah, under his protection. His angels are going to be watching at all times, man, because the Lord is going to, we're going to be in, in a perfect state. We're going to be ruling you know the lord is going to wash away the filth of our women he's going to make them pure once again like the 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 the, uh, the young maids that they're supposed to be they're going to be in order they're going to be righteous they're going to be submissive it's going to be unheard of man it's going, it's, going, it's going to be beautiful man we got a lot to look forward to man so with that man i know this lesson was kind of a little long but Hey, Lord willing, this lesson was edifying to you, brothers, man. I feel real good about this lesson. So with that, I'm going to close out by saying, Kahalayam la, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahashim, Rakakodash.
double honors to the apostles and the elders of great millstone. Must peace, love, and sight taste the brothers doing this work in truth and sincerity. Shalom, man. Hey, we got a lot to look forward to, brothers. Got a lot to look forward to. Salvation is near, man. Shalom.